A, it is me, D.L. Hughley, watching Comedy Matters TV with Jeffrey Gurry. And you'll never be the same after this. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> he said, he, Dia, I'm a DL, and he thinks I'm crazy, but in a I do new, think you're crazy. In an unusual way. Yeah, well, you're not the kind of crazy that will hide furniture and shit. <laughs> you are the kind of crazy that will hide. He thinks that's yeah. normal. See, he's been trying to figure me out for years, yes. right? Because we go back a long way. Yes. And you still got your hair, your teeth, and John Jackson's clothes. That's what it's about. <laughs> You like the white Bishop Don Juan. That's what it got. Like that crazy? Isn't that crazy? So you always been like that. Always been, always been different. We just launched to a different drum. Yeah. What yeah. drums are they playing? <laughs> it's a strange beat. A very it strange is. beat. Maybe Roberts knows. It is. So, so when you, because the thing about you that I've always loved, I've had a conversation with you about any number of things. And I'm, I'm a fairly... I'm well said you're guy. very intelligent but when I watch I think, I think but I never ever ever one time when we've been talking about anything came up with the same conclusion you did like I went and I think I got all the angles covered and I go they're fucking never good in this this shit <laughs> that, that's very interesting to me man it's very interesting and so so do you think that do you think that because now that's not rewarded the only place you could ever be where you are now is in our arena. You mean in the entertainment world? No, in the comedy, comedy world. world. I don't comedy think world. Yeah. yeah. You, you would be Prince in the music world. <laughs> but in our world, it's the only, and, and, and I think you got the last train out. You know what I mean? Like, the, 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 the thing that you have wouldn't be allowed anymore. But it's the only way I know. Yeah. See, and you're not, the last one. It's not they, contrived. They, no. It's just who I evolved yeah. to be. And that scares me. It, <laughs> <laughs> it scares a lot I'm like, of how did they find that? Like, <laughs> no, it's, it's just so wild. But it's interesting, like I said, he's like a scientist <laughs> who studies me. Right. He knows he knows all the stories. I wish you were under glass. glass. So I can watch you all like a specimen. Right? Yes. Yes. Like a specimen. That's something to be studied. So you knew very long. So when you were a dentist and yeah. a husband, Right. I, I did all the all the things I thought I would never have. Right. Like I write books on happiness. And one of the things I said was I never thought I would have the things that other people took for granted. Right. I never thought I don't know where those thoughts came from. I can tell you what they came from. But it also Ooh. I stuttered very badly. Do, do you remember that? Yes. I stuttered until I cured myself. In my twenties. How the fuck do you cure yourself? Mind control. I I teach I work as an avocation, I work with stutterers all over the world. And I teach them how not to stub anymore. That's why I think you would say. Because you know, it's, it's, so I'm you know, like, no. I learned to control my mind. Mind control is very important. Have you ever confronted fear? So how much time every do you day? Have? Like, every I'm day, a black right? man. I'm like, like, yeah, okay, so you get it. So you get it. I wrote one of the books I wrote is called Fight the Fear. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. That's the end of your way. I fight fear every day, but I never let it stop. What are you afraid of? Just everything makes me. Even tonight. I'm thinking, what if I get there and they don't let me in? What if I don't get to see Who the, the uh, fuck wouldn't let you in? <laughs> you look like you own the club. Wasn't that funny? I know. It's so crazy, right? But those are the things that occur to me. What if it doesn't work out? I don't know where I got that from. Now, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of things, but the things I was always afraid of, I would do. Well, exactly. You don't let it stand in your way. No, Fear is a bully. No, Fear I do let it stand. Like, see, bullies, people tell you that if you confront the bully, It'll go away. It'll shrink away. I don't know. Not My always. father told me one time, he said, if you punch the baddest dude in the mouth, and, and everybody knows, I, I punch the bullet and he beat the shit out of me. <laughs> That's what I said. And, and I never listened to my father. <laughs> <laughs> but I think my goal has never been to win. It's been to just make average, to show up, be present. Like, I, I don't expect, like, I've never prayed for victory or favor. I've just prayed to make a good account of myself, just to, just to be, to stand as long as I can. So I think... I have a different estimation of fear and a different process. But I've never seen anybody walk into a room. And I've known people. I have seen all kinds of people all over the world. I've never seen anybody be as comfortable around everybody as I've seen. Well, that's very special. I really appreciate that. Um, I've been working with energy my whole life since Stop I'm it. a little kid. No, no, seriously. 
when I was six or seven years old, I realized I could take away certain pain with my hands. And that opened me up to the concept of past lives. And maybe people feel that. I don't know. And you know what had a, a lot to do with it? When I cured myself of stuttering, it gave me a lot of confidence. Because you have to have a lot of confidence to be able to speak without stuttering. If you were a, se a severe stutterer, I couldn't even ever say my name. I could never say Gurian. Most stutterers can't say their own name. And I think that gave me a sense of confidence. Because people say that to me. They say that I, I seem to be confident. Even if I'm nervous inside, I don't show it. No, see, that's the thing. I, I don't I, I'm, I'm always it. nervous all the time, but I'm never. I always try to, on the outside, look different. So when you talk about curing yourself in energy, so if energy can be good, it can be the opposite side of that. It's negative energy. Right. Sure. And the so do you protect your energy? Yes, I do all the time. I try and eliminate people from my life that have negative energy because I'm, I'm an empath and I would internalize it and I can't take a chance and do that. So you know right away if they have bad energy? Yeah. You have wonderful energy. The, yeah, the, you have the best. Yeah, You're yeah, the best. Yeah. Yeah. No, really. You are. That's why I love you, man. I love to come Is that to why you like? You know why I love you? Because I've never seen anything like you. <laughs> I never, like, I would never imagine my life in a world that you existed. Never. Isn't that crazy? Like, when people see you, they're like, how do these two motherfuckers <laughs> know each other, man? <laughs> people used to say that about Patrice and I. We, we had such a, a wonderful thing, and they, they would never even think we would know mm. each other. And he made me his co-host on the Black Phillips show. And that was a great honor to me. And people would say, How? we never went up against each other. You know, he had right. a reputation for, if you went up against Patrice, you would always lose. Right. We ju it was just pure love. We never did that with each other. Because well, we weren't supportive. on the same plane. Though. It was always supportive. It was like, we, we respected each other. Because right. I go through life, I love everybody until they teach me not to. Right. Right. That's just how I live. You know, I don't... Understand you. <laughs> okay, let's. It's okay, but you're the best. Man. Thank you, man. Really, it's you know okay. that I had never had a meal. I've, I've known you. I don't even know how long, but I had never seen you eat or drink. And I was like, this motherfucker is a. Until he took me out to dinner. He took me out to dinner specifically to watch me eat. Do you know why? He never saw me eat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't you know, sure that I ate. No, no. And so then, if you wouldn't have ate, I'm like, this motherfucker's a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see you eat. See, and, and I saw you eat. You, what did you eat? You ate a... Oh, I don't remember what I ate, but I remember I sat next to you and yes. you watched to, to make sure that I you ate. fucking right I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, okay, he's not just, he's not just fucking around. He always had the best time. He's not... Do you, do you miss, do you think, like, I'm never worried about comedy. Because I think there have been different iterations of it and they've always been, you know, from Lenny Blues to... No, it was Richard Pryor to, to Andy Murphy. The, the, the iterations of it. And, and the thing that comics have always had to contend with is that they were always, the art form was always under assault from the general public because the things that we say and do, um, I think have always made people feel uncomfortable. And in, in our society, we, we hate this guy. Mm -hmm. We hate. Like, even now, the way we communicate with each other is we have to say just kidding or LOL mm -hmm. or ha ha ha. JK. Right? So we have, to, we have to tip the joke. Mm -hmm. And I think the best of us, like, leave it to people's imagination. Well, I look at comedy as a healing force. And I don't know if you remember this, but I was the opening act at the Martin Luther King Comedy Festival yes. in Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. That's what I would, and I was like, this is and the I scariest said to, shit I've ever I said to the audience, are you guys into racial humor? And they said, yes. And I did some shit, and, and, and it went over very well. And I, I, I left the stage, and I came back, and I said, I want to thank everybody for being so cool, because I look at comedy as a healing force, as a way of bringing everybody together. And it got like a standing ovation. But I, I think that you're right. But I think most healing is painful. It can be. No, sure. yeah. In, in general, in general, the things, medicine by definition, hurts before it, it, it works. In order to heal, you have to have a wound first. Right. Yeah, you, there's no, otherwise there's nothing to heal. Right. So you're healing people that are wounded. And the thing about us as a society right now, we don't even want to say what the wound is. So it's almost asking to be healed without a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you're saying, I want these things to happen, but I don't want you to tell me what's wrong with me. I want you to give me this litany of things that are supposed to do fix a thing, and we haven't identified what it is. And I think that's the problem with society. We don't want, we're very sacral. We don't want pain. It's the reason we're addicted to pain pillars. Mm -hmm. It's the reason we're addicted to alcohol as I drink seven, <laughs> 13. But it's the reason because we want all our senses dull because we don't ever want to feel anything. And you think that it, that it, it has a healing problem. Well, I'm sober for many years because I agreed to feel all the feelings. The bad feelings used to scare me. Yes. And so I would take things or drink so that I wouldn't have to feel Me it. too. And now I don't do that anymore. I, I realize that the bad feelings won't kill me. I'm so and glad I, that you I, don't drink because there's more for me. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I allow myself to feel everything, yeah. even the uncomfortable feelings. Because it used to be, as an empath, if I felt sad or depressed or lonely, I felt like I'd be that way for the rest of my life. I didn't think that tomorrow could be different. I didn't see that. Right. Now I've learned that, that it could just be for today. So feelings are in fact, and thoughts are not necessarily facts. Yes. And, I, and I learned that just because I think something, I do electrical, don't believe your thoughts. Because we're all holding thoughts that are not valid for us. Right. Even you. That's not true. We're all holding thoughts. No. <laughs> We're holding thoughts that are negative no, for us. Well, no. So I'll, I'll speak for myself. So I had to let go. In order to cure myself of stuttering, I had to find out what I was thinking that was not valid for me. And I call them heart wounds. From the time we're children, every time someone hurts your feelings or breaks a promise to you or hurts you in some way, right. you keep it in your heart chakra. It's, I call but don't you wounds. think that there's some people here that are just to bear witness? They're just here. Like, like... In a race, there's a rabbit, yeah. right? That rabbit sets the pace. He mm -hmm. you knows he's never gonna win, right? But he sets the but he sets the pace. Mm -hmm. So he has a function, right? Mm -hmm. There are people in our society. Sure, there's people that, like I firmly believe that my go, my vocation, my um, purpose is to bear witness. And to do it in any way I can. Well, that's what you do on stage. You expose. You bring out ideas and thoughts, and you expound upon them. Right. And people get it. They don't. Well, I can tell from the audience that. But see, laughter, is. laughter, but laughter is a laughter is a is a. As much as it is an agreement, it is a level of discomfort too. It is. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Well, some people. It depends what you're talking about. There are people who laugh out of embarrassment because a lot of people do ugly shit when they do right. comedy. Which you don't do, and I, which I hate. I tell young comics, don't do only bathroom humor. Nobody wants to hear no, that. No, but, but 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 just people laugh just, out of embarrassment. The thing that this is this is the world I live in. So I watch the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Where they had a Jesus commercial and then a Timu commercial. Mm -hmm. Right. So 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 what I thought was commercials are just to introduce a new product or to expand your customer base, right? It's like these people. When I buy a a, a a a commercial at the Super Bowl, that means that uh, all these people who don't know I'm doing it. Like, Jesus had more commercials than Doritos this year. <laughs> and he's the most famous human being that ever lived. He has the number one selling book of all time. He has a day and two holidays. So it isn't that people don't know him. Mm -hmm. It isn't that people don't know him. But it's the kind of vanguard. We'll have a Jesus commercial. And there's a Super Bowl commercial, and then people are shooting at a church that day. And then Wednesday, at the Super Bowl celebration, they're shooting again. I think we let ourselves off the hook when we don't allow ourselves to see the ugliness and the, and the hypocrisy of that. Well, I think it's interesting that he didn't know what he started. He did. He never got to see it. He did. He did. That's why he yeah. left. He's like, no, I can't stand him for this. <laughs> Well, I said, you know, it's a shame that Jesus had to be killed, but thank God he was killed in a way that people could wear. Because yeah. <laughs> what if it had been eaten by sharks? How are you going to wear that? Right. What if it had been crushed to death by a chariot? People all over the world, little, little, little chariots, but a guy flattened out like a pancake. Yeah, right. Right. You, right. Can't go to shark you, you can't go to church wearing something like that, right? What if, <laughs> been, what if they had one of those weird accidents? He's walking down the street and an air conditioner falls on his head. Jewelers would go crazy. Try, see, a guy, a guy like this with a 10,000 BTU fetters coming out of him. 
That's not a religious no, symbol, Dio. No, you no, can't do that. Yeah, yeah, you it, you it, can't it, wear that to church. No, it's not good. No. So thank God he was killed in a way that people could wear. Right. right. That's fucking. That's why I look at you. That's why I think we're inside. That's why I think. That's what like I was never seen. seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that. am a pretty like, and I never would have thought about that way. Well, people think of different things. That's what I love about comedy. I've been writing comedy for decades. So I what don't you like? Basically nothing. I just I love comedy. Uh, it's been my life since I'm 12 years old. I've been writing comedy. You know, it's just something. It's I love making people laugh. I love thinking. I love the art of writing. And you write a great joke. It's nothing like it. It's like what if you were singing with hip harmony. Right. It's an amazing feeling. The thing I don't like about comedy is almost like when you are baking a thing. Imagine someone tasting the cake before it's done. Well, that's why that's why comics don't want people filming their shit before they get it finished. But even isn't it that it's like it's not fully done yet? Right, but now we'll catch people in the middle of the process. Now and the thing that I dislike about comedy is when we grew up, we were coming up in, in, into this arena. We took the audience of the journey. Now we acquiesce to what they like. And I think it's a very dangerous thing. I think that if you look at the greatest people who turned out to be something like transcendent, if we caught them when they weren't ready, if it ended for them before they were fully involved, mm -hmm. then they would have been low. And the thing about comedy right now is there's a move to, to, to make us all conform and we never get the foot, uh, we never see the finished product. We're so unwilling to see the involvement. It's, a, it's an interesting point of view, but comedy itself, your bits are always evolving. Somebody wrote something about that recently, like a film, they'll do maybe one or two, sometimes they'll edit a film, but then it goes out to the public and it can't be changed. Comedy, we work on our stuff all the time. It's always, it's never really finished. Right. You're always adding to it. By the way, do you think people would be offended if I did the Jesus material? Sure, at first. Yeah, because it's not really hurtful. It's the truth. Everybody wears no, I, I, a way in which he was killed. The, people are wearing a crime scene, basically, which is, fucking hilarious. Which, is, <laughs> which really bothered them. It's fucking hilarious. When I realized that, they're really, that, that's actually what they're wearing. It's fucking hilarious. Is the way that someone was killed. And it's just a shame. We should have never been there. But I think that most people aren't nuanced enough to go on the journey. Well, I explain it better. But even, I, even ex no, no, no. Like, I get it. But even at that, the minute you say a thing that attacks or that they think is attacking, like, I never understood why Jesus would need a job. Mm hmm. As a carpenter. Like, I'm like, why so like, the like, son of God? Like, why, why, why would you need a job? <laughs> yeah, right. And you got, you, your father, like, you're going to have to get a job because this whole, what if the Jesus thing don't work? It doesn't work out. <laughs> <And you> gotta, <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> olive is coming along. I don't know. <laughs> and then, what do you want to be? I want to be a carpenter. But, Dad, you know I hate nails. You know what I mean? Yeah, isn't that weird? Right. I mean, carpenter winds up nailed to a cross. And, you know, that scared me so much as a child. Hearing that story, that people could be that cruel, that they could crucify somebody. It scared me so much, like around Christmas time, to think that people would do that to somebody. Sure. To put nails through somebody and nail them to a cross. People have always been cruel. From the but, beginning of time, people have been so cruel. But you know, for me, what I've always understood, the most cruel things you could ever do, ever do, are done to black and brown people. The most cruel things you could ever do. And so when I get on stage, I don't, that's not the fourth out of my mind, but if I have a thought, I understand that my goal is to get people to see themselves. Well, whoever thought of any owning anybody, where, where did that thought even come from? Right. To own a person? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. It's just like it shows just how sick people are. Yeah. 
and it happened in many different places over the world, not just the United States. But that's true. But whoever thought that you could own a person, where would that thought even come from? How does that, you know what I'm saying? How does that even enter somebody's mind? I'm going to own this person. It's historical. It's happening. Uh, the thing that I, that maybe I was going, when people own people up from all over the world, you know what America did that nobody else did? Come up with Nikki. Mm -hmm. What, with the word? The word Nikki. Like, it's the most, it's lasted longer than the pyramid. It'll be around. It is the most well built American product ever. Ever. You could you could never you could you could not speak English. You could never have been to this part of the world. In sign language, there's a way to say that word. And I think when people have these com uh, these arguments about how it happened all over, the thing that America did that no one else did was an inventor word that was so descriptive that everybody knew what it was. There's not it's even an a American word. word. It is it's such an ugly word, but there are white N words too. I think it just applies, you know, I understand that we use this. It's not good It's not good words. I wish, no. you know what would make the world better? Really if well, we well, could well, come well, up with the white word that made white people feel as bad as nigga makeup. <laughs> yeah, crap, it doesn't feel no. like Like I fucked your daughter, that's, that's right. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not the same thing. No, it's not the same thing because white people were not enslaved, but it's just, it's, it's, a ugly, it's, it's an ugly word. And, and just the whole concept is just very bizarre that human beings could think of owning another person and that that's okay. It's, it's just interesting. So do you think, do you think that the, the person you are now, like you've always known that love could heal and that laughter could heal. So you were always on a different trajectory. You always understood you were you were functioning past your circumstances. What I have is confusing to me too. I can move I could be moved to tears, so yes. Just thinking you know, you talk about your daughters or your family. I can I can be moved to tears very easily. I have, uh, I watch people sing on TV, little kids have beautiful voices, and it moves me to tears, and I can't control it. So there's something about me that's very different, yeah. and it makes it very difficult when you're growing up that way, to be that level of sensitivity. Right. You have to learn to own it as a strength and not as a weakness. Right. And that's a because that can be back connected to humanity. That connected to humanity. That can connect. Well, that to connects you. me to humanity. Yeah. That's why I feel that with some people. That I love this man. This good is the best. I'm always shocked when people don't love me. I'm like, how could you not? That's something. I know. I go, wow. It, yeah. It's like you could be in a room of a thousand people, nine nine hundred ninety nine are there in your honor, right. and one person doesn't like you. That's the person right. that you think about. Mm -hmm. Not crazy. Yeah, it's a common thing. It's a common thing I'm speaking. I think we're going to the same place. I think we're going to take different roads together. I think the thing I've always loved about you is that I've never seen you be different than I imagined you, even in all kinds of circumstances. Is that a good thing? I think so. That's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, this it's a wonderful thing. Because no, people can say whatever they want. People love consistency. McDonald's couldn't exist without consistency. Like, like the things we buy that people trash all the time, what it has is it's the same thing all the time. I'm familiar with a couple of women. I know what it's going to be. People love it. it. The market. The only time the market plucks away is when there's inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, people don't like uncertainty. Me, I, am, I would say I am consistent. You are? Yeah. Definitely. You, you're going to wear the same clothes 30 years from now. <laughs> And hopefully they'll still fit. No, 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 they'll still fit. Because you don't eat shit. <laughs> I don't need it. I love you, man. So I love you way more. So way great more. to see you. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Comedy Matters TV. To check out some of our other videos, click on the boxes on either side of me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Not just for me, but for my parents.